Hey guys, in today's Jollof Mars, we are going to talk about the most valuable item in my kitchen. By valuable, I mean the cooking item or utensil that every time I bring it out to use it, every time I'm using it, I feel so thankful that I have it in my kitchen. I'll be wondering where I would be if I didn't have that item in my kitchen. I mean, right now, without this cooking item, I cannot cook in this kitchen, I'm telling you, it's not a gas cooker, it's not a freezer. I know that those are valuable as well, but they don't make me feel this way, if you know what I mean, <laughs> whenever I'm using those ones. And that special item is my pressure pot. Yes, look at it over there. I'm in love with this cooking item. The importance of a pressure cooker in a Nigerian kitchen cannot be overemphasized. When you think about all those hard meats, shaki, or more stock fish, hot chicken. Yeah. Before I had this pressure pot, I used to cook hot chicken for one and a half hours with an ordinary pot before I get it to the perfect doneness that I and my family love. So you can imagine the amount of time it's saving me now. This thing cooks hot chicken in as much time that it takes it to pressurize, I'm telling you, because as soon as it pressurizes, as soon as I hear that she sound, I turn it off and leave it to... Actually, we're going to cook chicken now so that you see what I'm saying, so that we time it, because I don't even know the exact time it does that, but I know that it does it in no time, maybe 15 minutes. And um, yeah, it's done. If you're cooking momo, you know, there's this momo in Nigeria. You know the momo that they sell in the market? Momo is cow skin anyway, for those who don't know. There's this pomo they sell in the market, or most pomo that they sell in Lagos, for example, is already kind of pre-cooked, that is half done, yeah, if you cook it in a short while, it's done, but there's this pomo that we brought back from Nigeria this time, eh? <laughs> this pomo is so tough, I think they just removed the hair on the skin and took it straight to the market, it's so, so, so raw and tough, <laughs> but this pressure cooker melts it in a short time, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's for more shaggy, hot chicken, anything that you can think of, beans, oh my god, if I soak the beans overnight, you know, to reduce bloating, I'll cook it in 20 minutes, yeah, from the time it pressurizes, uh, but if I don't soak the beans, half an hour or thereabouts, beans is done, yeah. The same with dry okra, fresh okra, any any of those tough chickpeas, any or all those tough ingredients, hard ingredients. This deals with it in no time. Let me show you. This is it. Can you believe that this pot is more than five years old? I, I only use it to cook meat. I don't use it to cook oily stuff so that I don't have all these things in the pot. I only use it to cook beans and okwa those are the two things that are oily that i use it to cook because i can't help it you know with the pressure pot you have to add every ingredient into the pot including palm oil when you're cooking it um so i, I can't help it with those two but at all other times i don't use it to cook soup because it doesn't even make sense to use it to cook soup because you're not going to pressurize it so i use an ordinary pot anyway i love it i love it so much look at that the brand is fago it's a European brand. I don't know if they still make this particular one anyway. I just bought this one because it's the one my friend uses. My friend that was talking to me about pressure pot, pressure pot. It just has three parts. The pot itself, which has the, the handle, the two handles. And um, you have the gasket. This gasket is what keeps the pressurized air in so that it doesn't escape. And then the cover cover is special because it has these controls if you can see it mine has cleaned off uh, you have the no pressure assuming you want to let the pressure out you use this thing and then this is one and this is two I hope you can see that this is one and this is two so we have setting one and setting two if you want to uh, I, I like using setting one for when I'm cooking beans or okra so that it will cook a little bit slowly. Yeah, but setting two is like if I use setting two to cook beans, the beans is not moist and soft like the way I like my beans at the end. But if I use setting one, uh -huh, 
it takes it a little bit longer to pressurize yes but it cooks it to the perfect doneness again not doneness and then this one is what you use to when you want to close it there's an arrow here you place it like that align of course every pressure cooker has, will have a different operation like but most often it's only one thing that you need to do just align the arrow to come with instructions then you close it close that one then put it either in one or two depending on what you're cooking and then wait for it to do the shea sound that means that it has pressurized and then I'll, let me just cook meat now let, let's see let me cook some chicken add stock cubes as always stock cubes are optional when cooking you can add your favorite seasonings but these are the only three seasonings that i add when cooking chicken because i believe in allowing the natural flavor of the chicken to shine through some of these mixed spices when you add them to your meal they just overshadow the meal chicken has its own natural delicious flavor so i let it shine too that is just my choice yeah it doesn't mean it's the best choice then i cover it align the arrow with the handle here set it to two close that turn on the stove to the highest heat it doesn't matter when i'm cooking chicken it doesn't really matter so the time now is 11 a.m. Let's see how long it takes it to pressurize. While that is cooking, let me be gisting you about my story with pressure pot. Oh my God. Before I bought this pressure pot, I used to cook all these tough meats, hot chicken. Hot chicken especially because we eat a lot of chicken in this house. <laughs> we use it for pepper chicken, grilled chicken. My husband likes grilled chicken. He calls it anunchi. You know this hot chicken. When you boil it and then grill it in the oven, oh my god, you just be in a ziwalo ya, like a nunchi. <laughs> I don't know what a ziwalo is. You know, you know, you'll be peeling it, like taking it a little bit, little bit by little bit, like a nunchi, like bush meat. <laughs> he likes to eat that. So I cook hot chicken so often in this house. Yeah. Before I had a pressure cooker, I'll be cooking this hot chicken for. One and a half hours, sometimes two hours <laughs> before it gets done. Hi, and one of my friends here will always, when she, whenever she visited me, she'll be pitying me. She had a pressure pot then, exact, this exact pressure pot, that's why I bought this brand. So she'll be pitying me, she'll be looking at me like this, and she'll say, Why, you still have a pressure pot, gaju, gaju. I'll translate for you. <laughs> it means, woman, I told you to go and buy a pressure pot. You refused. Since I came here, since we've been talking here, we would have finished cooking this meat and finished eating it and forgotten that we ate meat. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're still cooking. She said, she because she something like that. She has this lovely emo accent. <laughs> Her Imo, the Imo dialect, I love Imo, Imo state dialect, the, the Imo dialect that people from Imo state, I think Owere people speak, I love it so much, so that's how she'll be telling me and I'll be like, how, what can you cook, how fast can you cook meat, he said, hmm. I don't need to tell you how fast, go, just go and buy the pot, I said, this woman, you can't even tell me how, how, how fast he cooks this thing and you want me to go and buy it, and me, I'm not a gadget freak, right? In everything about me, even in clothes, uh, kitchen equipment, anything. Because what I first of all think about, especially with kitchen utensils, is that is that a lot of these kitchen appliances will tell you that, oh, it saves you time to do this, to do that. But then nobody talks about the amount of time it takes you to keep it clean, to wash it. <laughs> I was asking her, where will it be? Who will be cleaning it? Because I don't like things lying on my 
kitchen cupboard no uh, i don't like things lying around i want to put everything in, into a cupboard and anything that cannot fit into my cupboard i'm not buying <laughs> and anything that i have to bring out every time wash it uh, use it then wash it again all those nooks and crannies that some of these uh, kitchen equipment have i said i'm not ready to do that she, she, she wasn't like okay every day she came to my house and she's not because she used still be saying the same thing that's a real pressure for to mine, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't listen because before I buy something, I go online and read the reviews, research, research up and down. And since I've not had time to do all those, I didn't buy it. But then one Christmas, I think this was Christmas of 2012. Yeah, because that's what really pushed me to go and buy this pot. Christmas of 2012, usually here at the end of every year, the Igbo Association here, all the Igbo people here, we come together and do an end of year party on Christmas Eve. So we're not a lot. The adults that are Igbos here are not up to 20. So now people have had children and we are a lot more because of the kids, but the adults are not up to 20. So usually the women gather in one person's house to prepare the meals we we'll eat on that day. And uh, yeah. So we came and this lady that I'm talking about that has always been marketing a pressure pot to me <laughs> came with her pressure pot because we prepared goat meat. We, we often uh, kill a goat and prepare lots of like goat meat pepper soup, isiewu and all that. So she brought her pressure pot so that we use it to cook the, the, the annual <laughs> the goat meat. And while we were cooking it, as soon as the pressure sound went, she was like, it's okay, it's done. That we should bring it now. Everybody was like, Whoa, you woman, calm down. It's it's uh, good meat that we are cooking. He said, hmm. She would say, hmm. Agualamun, agualamun. That's, I've told you people, I've told you people, this meat is done. If you leave it any longer than this, it will melt in the pot. I was like, it's so bad. What are you talking about? We are cooking anwewu that takes two hours to, and this is anwewu with the skin, you know, because here we, Usually here, they, they sell it without the skin, but there's these people that we tell to kill the goats and bring to us some Nigerian guys that live in another city. And we tell them to specifically leave the skin on. So this is goat meat with skin. <laughs> and she's talking about it being done in under, in about 15 minutes. We are like, wait. But maybe after five minutes, she was like, this thing is okay. I'm saying it now. This thing is okay. You guys should bring it out. And when you... Bring it down, you should depressurize it under the tap because if you leave it to depressurize on its own, of course, then I didn't understand what she was talking about. I knew that, I remember now that I'm using the pot, this is what she was saying. And uh, she said, if you bring it down, you should depressurize it under the cold tap. Or if not, <laughs> this batch of goat meat that we're cooking will be a mess. I was like, right a lot. I was paying attention. And then we brought it down and depressurized it under the cold tap. And lo and behold, the goat meat, you know how you say that meat is falling off the bones? Yeah, this is a kind of meat that is so overcooked that if you attempt to use it to cook soup or anything, it, it will just turn to thickener in the soup. It will disappear. You will see, you'll be drinking it like a camel. <laughs> For real. And finally, oh my people, you know what they say, seeing is believing. <laughs> this is what convinced me to run with speed <laughs> by fire by force to go and buy a pressure pot yeah unfortunately unfortunately in the sense that i was like beating myself up so much what what made me like why didn't i buy this pressure pot a long time ago like i didn't understand how useful it will be in my kitchen and i tell you we are approaching the end of the year, everybody is going Christmas shopping and all that kind of end of year shopping, whatever shopping you call it. I tell you, if there's a gift, you give to your kitchen. Let me not say it's not your own gift, but because this, this gift is a gift you give to everybody in your home because you, anybody that is responsible for cooking in your home will be so happy. Even everybody, even the people eating the meal will be so happy because all these cooking cooking uh, uh, meat forever and ever <laughs> you use three hours to cook a pot of soup or use three hours to cook jollof rice it will come to an end i'm telling you the truth like this is the best thing you can do for your kitchen 
a pressure pot. It's the best. It saves you time, so much time, I'm telling you. Saves you money. Of course, time is money. And then it saves you money, more money on top because whether you're using a gas cooker or you're using an electric cooker, it saves you gas, it saves you electricity. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I can hear it coming. The pre pressure is coming. 10 minutes now. So I am I am begging you. It doesn't cost a lot. I think in back in 2013, I I bought this one for 50 something euros. I can't remember. But it's not more than 60 euros. I'm pretty sure of that. It's either 57 euros or something like that. And this pot has given me that money back a thousand fold. Every time I'm using it to cook, my lifespan is increased. <laughs> it's not even possible. <laughs> I'm telling you the honest truth. It makes me feel so happy and so thankful to have this pot. I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. That is my tip of tips of the year. <laughs> Go and buy yourself a pressure pot. I'm begging you. I am begging you. I am begging you. It's so important. There's a family I know that they eat a lot of beans. It, 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 the kids like beans. So cooking beans in their home is nothing to them because half an hour, beans is done, like melting. Anyhow you want it. If you want it like that kind of uh, wagon beans <laughs> that is melting, use this pot for it. You have to learn how to use it though. It comes with a manual, of course, but you know, these products are made in Western countries. So the things you see in the manuals, like the foods and the cooking times you see in the manuals and the guidance you see in the manuals are usually Oibo food. Uh, but uh, for our own food, just go by whatever you're cooking. Like I'm telling you, I don't know about other pressure pots, but this particular pressure pot, once it pressurizes, for instance, this chicken now, if it pressurizes, I'll just take it off the, the burner because I'll, I'll put off the, the, the cooker, of course, and then remove it from that burner because I use a vitro ceramic cooker, which has residual heat. So I'll make sure I take it away to a cold burner and leave it to depressurize on its own. Then I'll have the perfect doneness for the chicken, just the way we like it. I don't know how you like your own hot chicken cooked. So this is perfect for us. It will depressurize on its own, cool down. The pressure will come down on its own. I don't, I don't do anything to the setting. I just leave it on that same number two setting. And then when it depressurizes on its own, can you hear it? It's coming up. The pressure is building, building up slowly. So when it depressurizes, the, the chicken is perfect. Then I grill it in the oven just for it to be to look golden, uh, not for any other reason because it's already done. You can eat it like that. It's already done. But if I am, say, in a hurry, I don't want to leave it to depressurize on its own because if it, you leave it to depressurize on its own, it takes time to depressurize. I don't know. That one, I'll time it today as well. So what I'll do is I leave it when it pressurizes. You'll hear that sound. sound. I'll leave it to cook there for five more minutes at most. I'm telling you, sometimes when I want to leave it for that, those five minutes, I'll be like, uh, anxious <laughs> because I'll be like, do I take it off now? Because this thing, one minute makes a lot of difference. That's what I found with it. One minute extra left on pressure makes a lot of difference. So five minutes maximum with this hot chicken and I take it off the stove and I have to cool it, like depressurize it under cold tap so that it will depressurize quickly. Because if you leave it, if you leave it cooking five minutes after it has pressurize and you remove it from the cooker and leave it to depressurize on its own the, the chicken will melt for me it will melt but then there will be some people that will like that kind of chicken but i don't like that kind of chicken i don't like chewing but when i want to eat any meat chicken beef i, I want to feel the meat <laughs> i want to bite into it not i don't want to drink it like akamu <laughs> this is a gift that keeps giving yeah I recommend, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you buy a pressure pot for your kitchen this Christmas if you haven't done so, if you don't have a pressure pot before. Then okwa, <clears throat> okwa, um, dry okwa is what we have here of course and when I want to cook okwa I just 
soak the okra the, the evening before. The next day, I wash it very well because it, it, dry okra usually contains a lot of sand. And um, I'll cook it in this pressure pot for half an hour because I like my okra very soft and moist. Half an hour at most, I'm telling you. I just put the okra, pour water to cover it, like two inches of water to cover the okra. And that is the perfect amount of water that I use. Then I add all the other ingredients I need. Like the one I posted in my YouTube story recently. Normally we, we use uh, fresh bitter leaves, like not washed bitter leaves, fresh bitter leaf, the whole leaf. We put a few of that into okwa. It make, gives it a nice, you know, that bitter taste of bitter leaves and the nice kind of sweet taste of okwa will come together like to be the perfect taste. But here I don't have fresh bitter leaves. So what I use is spinach, spinach works. So for that one, I don't put the spinach at the beginning. I put it when the okwa is done. When the okwa is done, I depressurize it and then put the, put the, a few leaves, a few spinach leaves and then leave it to boil again and that's it perfect that's what i used to cook it here yeah a pressure cooker is a lifesaver buy one today i'm telling you don't be like me that wasted i don't know how long i wasted before buying this pot i'm telling you <laughs> so do you have any special kitchen item to recommend to me like i want i don't want kitchen items that do only one thing of course this one you may say that it does only one thing you know cook hard stuff but there are so many hard ingredients in a Nigerian kitchen, <laughs> so it's like it does a lot of things. Uh, for instance, uh, I always feel that a rice cooker is something that I'll never buy because I feel that it does. Can you hear that? It's coming on. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. This pressure is on now. It may the sound may increase over time, but yeah, that's the pressure. It's pressurized now. So that's 20 minutes of being pressurized. Then I'll take it off the stove. Can you hear that? That's the pressure. So I'm going to turn it off and take it off away from that burner. Put it on a cold burner. That's it. And you can still hear the sound here because it's still cooking. And then I'll leave it. I didn't change the setting. It's still on setting two. So I'll leave it to depressurize on its own. And I'll show you what it looks like. I don't know if we'll still be talking by then, but I'll show you anyway. So as I was saying, a rice cooker is something that I think shouldn't come into my kitchen because it does only one thing. <laughs> And I, I, I don't think it saves any time because uh, some people say, oh, you can s set the time. There are some that you can set the time to start cooking from a certain time uh, so that even if you're out of the house, the rice will be ready by the time you come back, you know, and all that. So please, if you have a cooking appliance that you think I can benefit from, just recommend it to me and I'll look into it and see if I need to buy it. I don't have a lot of cooking appliances here. You know all those electrical appliances that people use in the kitchen, you know, that makes your kitchen technologically up to date. <laughs> I don't usually buy them because I'll be thinking, where will I keep them? Who will wash them? For example, anything that is used for chopping, I usually feel by the time I finish, I go and find this thing in a cupboard where I put it, bring it out, Couple it if it's the one that needs coupling, w wash it, couple it, and then use it, and then wash it again, and then uncouple it, and then leave it to dry, and then go and put it back. I would have used a knife and a chopping board, you know? <laughs> so that's the way I process it in my brain before I buy any gadget. Yeah, please buy a pressure for how many times have I said that in this video? Go and buy one. Any, any brand you want, or you can ask your friends. I think. Uh, with these kind of things, it's better to hear from someone that has used it before. If possible, if you can go to the, the person's house 
see it being used if you like it because I, someone that owned this pot was telling me about it for months but I only gave in, I only listened when I saw it in use so if you have anybody that has that kind of thing go to the person's house, see it being used, read reviews online I believe all pressure pots from a good brand should be fine yeah it doesn't have to be fago in fact this fago i don't see it in the shops anymore for years now because the pot i bought for the village in nigeria when i wanted to buy that pot that was um that was three years ago i didn't see this fago because i wanted to buy it i didn't see it in the market and then when i wanted to buy a pressure pot for my kitchen in lagos as well this one this one was this year and i didn't see it in the in the shops i bought uh, another brand i'll show you the i'll put the, the video of that other brand i bought that's the one that is everywhere in the market in the in the supermarket now so i don't even think this one is still in the market so and before i forget for the five years i've had it i've never had any problems with it the only thing that you need to change in this pot is the gasket you know that rubber thing that i showed you this one i've changed it once since i bought it if something doesn't cut it, like if a knife doesn't cut it accidentally, it will weaken after some time. And in fact, the day, <laughs> and there's no way to know that it's weak till you start using the pot. In fact, the day this thing showed me that it's weak, we ran, we were cooking that kind of Christmas cooking that I was telling you about. And I think it was last year Christmas. We were cooking here with this pot. When it, it was pressurized, the, the the rubber opened at the top the rubber popped up and white this splashed everywhere in the ceiling we all ran all the ladies that were it, it happened in this kitchen all the ladies that were cooking in this kitchen we all ran <laughs> so, that was what happened yeah it was so scary that day and then i went and changed it and since then i've been using it no problems so i've seen where the the pot, the pot cover fell and the handle broke. If that handle breaks, the pot cover is useless because it's that handle that you use to latch onto the lower one to be able to pressurize it. So that's another thing that can happen. So if you have an accident, a kitchen accident, and the handle of the pot breaks, then that's it. Or the handle of the pot or the handle of the cover. Yeah, any of them. If anything happens to them, then the pot is gone. Yeah. So, it's depressurizing, depressurizing, depressurizing. When it depressurizes, there's a yellow button that will drop in. So, I hope you found this video helpful. It's a huge time saver, you know, in today's world where we don't, we don't have enough time in the day. You need anything that will save you time, yeah. There's another gadget that I've been eyeing. You know that one that they call kitchen robot? The one that they say that... It, you just need to put all the ingredients and then it will chop it and cook it. <laughs> I still can't get my head around how it works, but yeah. Okay, that's it. Over here, depressurized. You see that yellow button that I was talking about? Normally, the yellow button or pin, you can call it a pin, is you will see it outside this way. I'll see if I can use my hand to show you later. But when it depressurizes, that drops. Of course, it was like this. And then you can bring this one out when it's up you cannot bring this thing out yeah you cannot bring this one out and then it took about 20 minutes to depressurize i checked the time then then you bring out this one open it then you lift it up see it's done that's how we want it That's how we like it. See? By the time it goes into the oven and comes out, it will be like anun. <laughs> and of course, that's why you see all that water. Uh, a pressure pot has a minimum amount of water you can add to it. That's, another, that's one con of it. <laughs> so that means that by the time you finish cooking like this, you have a lot of water. So assuming i'm going to use this to make stew this water will be too much for the uh, quantity of stew that this meat will be for so 
that's why in some of my videos you see me removing the meat and then boiling down this chicken stock to the quantity that is perfect for the stew that i'm making but if you're cooking jollof rice this water is fine yeah this water is fine because three cups of jollof rice or whatever that you're cooking will be able to dry this water up yeah so you don't add any new water you use only this water from cooking the chicken okay yeah so that's how i do it so that's it that's it for today's jollof mass do you have a pressure pot what's your brand is there anything special that yours can do that other pressure pots cannot do if you're in nigeria where can one buy a stainless steel pressure pot i saw a pressure pot in nigeria but it's aluminium the, the body is aluminium but it works as normal as a pressure pot but i want to know if there's a place or shop instagram vendors that sell stainless steel original stainless steel pressure pots let me know in the comments all right bye bye see you tomorrow at the usual time